The F-35 Lightning II, while considered by many to be the future of air combat, is quickly becoming the present, with squadrons forming at locations such as Hill Air Force Base Utah and Luke Air Force Base Arizona. For those who don't know much about the F-35, it may seem like just an awesome looking new plane, but behind the slick design is a factor that makes it especially appealing to the US military in these uncertain times. We live in an era right now where you know, there's a limited budget, and so with that limited budget, it's better to have a uh, Swiss Army knife multi-function tool than it is to have a $100 screwdriver set and a $100 hammer set and a $100 saw set. Does that make sense? The F-35 was engineered as a jack of all trades, air to air, air to ground, reconnaissance, stealth. But how exactly does being able to do it all make the F-35 more capable than, well, a $100 screwdriver set and a $100 saw set? So if your goal is to take out a target, you're going to have to have eight F-15s to provide fighter protection. You're going to have to have eight F-16s to take out the surface-to-air missiles. And then you're going to have to have eight more F-15E strike eagles in order to actually go in there and bomb the target. In order to support all those airplanes, you're going to need probably 10 tankers to refuel those fighters to get them into and out of the target area, as well as an AWACS in order to be able to control that. Instead, what you can do is you can send in four F-35s. They can sneak past the fighters, they can sneak past the surface-to-air missiles, they can bomb the target, and then they can defend themselves on the way out of the target area. Four planes and four pilots seems like a better risk than 35 in this particular theoretical scenario, but do we even have pilots trained for this brand new airframe? In the past, a plane needed to be fully operational before airmen could start using it. We're flying it here and training both pilots and maintainers at the same time. Whereas with other airplanes, the way it's been done is flight testing is complete, and then they start training for the actual uh, op squadrons. Pilots like Major Jared Santos are flying and thereby testing the capabilities of this plane on a daily basis at Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. There's not one sortie that goes by where I don't end up turning around looking at the uh, twin tails and the F-35 behind me and think, wow, I have the best job in the world. But pilots weren't the only airmen lucky enough to be selected for involvement in the early phases of this fifth generation fighter. I was so excited. I was like, yeah, this is awesome. It's this new airframe. I'm at the top and I'm paving the way for the next generation. Senior Airman Jessa Fleming is one of the first airmen to be part of the transition to F-35s across the Air Force. If I don't do a good job here and I don't make my work 110%, it's going to affect someone else later on down the line. As a low observable structural aircraft maintainer, her job is to mend coding and radar defects in the actual aircraft itself, figuring out how to fix things on an aircraft where they've never been fixed before. A job that she doesn't take lightly. Even the, just the smallest thing, a nick or a gouge in some kind of coating, will actually affect it enough to where we'd be seen, we'd be shot down, we'd lose pilots and we'd lose lives over it. And it could end someone, it could kill someone because of that. Airmen like her who are working with this new technology every day will have a huge effect on the future of the Air Force. Almost every single day we are told by our leadership and our supervision that, you know, you're paving the way. They're going to start taking people from here, from Eglin, and actually transplanting them into other bases to start the F-35 program all over the world. If you happen to be stationed at Hill or Luke, you should see F-35s flying around your airspace soon enough. But will this Swiss Army knife multi-function tool change the way we fight wars? Only time will tell. Reporting from Eglin Air Force Base, Florida, I'm Staff Sergeant Michael Brady.